Hi everyone. I think I've been flexing too much by using fancy wood. So at this time, I'll use cheap cedar pickets that will better represent myself and my skill level. And I made this redstone case slash drying rack with them. Let's see how I made it. This was the picket from the Home Depot and was super wet. I needed to dry it for a few days before starting this project. Then I did hand planing. For the bigger balls, I kind of dimensioned four sides of the balls. As I mentioned in the past video, it's easier to flatten the balls from the outside first. But then I was lazy, so for small balls, I only made one corner square each. So I can kind of measure and mark and just smooth out the other two faces. Oh yeah, this video won't be about the fine woodworking. I mean, one of the great aspects of hobby woodworking is to enjoy making things for yourself that meets your needs, right? Like size-wise, cost-wise, and function-wise. So I went with that route today. Moving on to cutting joints. I first cut all mortises in one go. For the true mortises, as long as you are careful about the grain direction of where it may blow out, even people who don't have a solid workbench like me can secure the board for chisels, so you can cut pretty cleanly. Then dovetailish joints. It seems like people say it's easy to cut out this part by a coping saw, but doing it with chisels wasn't that difficult either. So if you haven't tried it, it's worth giving it a try. Then I cleaned the edges. I know I was actually marking this joint on a not perfect surface, so there's gonna be a gap anyways, but at least I tried to follow the marking lines. Well, these mortises went pretty cleanly too, and no blowout at this moment, so I was happy with them. Now, tenons. I'm getting used to making mortises, but I still feel awkwardness when making tenons. I guess I have to make a small space workbench so I can hold a cutting piece well. Anyways, how I managed to cut out this pin from not square wood was, I marked the pin like the picture. It's not perfect, but it can get close to what I want. And oh, please be careful when disassembling a prefitted joint. All the effort to cut out the joints without blowout will be blowing away, especially and ironically, when you make a good tight joint. It's almost there, but I got make dividers for inside the box, so I cut out some slots on the sidebars. This process just reminds me of Kumiko project, and I feel like doing it again sometime soon. For the dividers, I used one lace plywood and I love using YKB key. It's easy cutting, but I wasn't actually happy with this plywood just because the plywood was $7. And I needed to use some leftover plywood from past projects. While I only used a little bit more than one piece of Fodara picket for the main box. Finally, it's time to assemble. It took two days to make it and I thought it was going to be done after this. But I felt like it was missing something. Yes, I want a lid. Okay, but... This is a drying rack, so what can I do? I decided to make a bamboo screen like a sushi rolling mat, but I wanted to tie it like the way how Japanese tie the lid for a water roll. The tying method is actually very simple, but as I did both sides in the flip way, like in the mirror, it confused me a lot. Here's the way how you tie it. I think rather than explaining it by words, 
it's easier you do it as you see. Then, if you do it more than enough times, your hand will automatically tie it for you without thinking. And to tell you the truth, the first five rows took me almost an hour. The rest was so easy though. Anyways, here's the final product. I'm happy with how it came out, though I should've made the dividers a bit shorter, but it's one of the most costly part of the storage, so I'll keep them as is. But yeah, when it comes to woodworking, you don't have to make a real nice thing to impress people, but you can at least create something that meets your needs. At this moment, I only have a few wet stones and it's pretty much because I don't like to get new stuff when I don't have a home for them. But now I have a home to take care of them and it fits my limited space. So I don't have to worry about going for my wet stone journey. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I would be happy if you liked the video and happier if you subscribe to this channel. If you have any suggestion to my video, it's also welcome. See you!